riding a Can-Am for the first time in this downpour. I don't know how I feel about this. We are gonna get wet today. That's what she said. So today, ladies and gentlemen, I got to test ride a Can-Am Spider and a Riker for the very first time. When I started riding motorcycles, I would always see these Can-Ams on the road and I was always intrigued by them, but I also knew that Can-Ams were always the butt of jokes, at least within the motorcycle community. I never knew exactly why, other than the fact that the motorcycle community can be contentious at times as to what's better than what. So I wanted to test one out for myself to see what these three-wheeled Batmobile looking vehicles were all about. I'll admit, I don't know a whole lot about these machines, and that's where Heather comes in. She was our demo guide for the day, and besides just being a great human being, she was a great Can-Am guide. She mapped out one of the best demo routes that I've ever been on, and she did a great job guiding us through the torrential rain and traffic. More on that later. Heather first gave us a rundown on the Spider and the Riker and all the features, as well as how to start and ride the Can-Ams. To be honest, I forgot most of it because there was just so much information to absorb, but I was able to get it figured out. How do I start this again? Uh, once you turn it on, you've already hit mode. You gotta take the kill switch off. Push that down. Ah, uh, I got it. Awesome, thank you. There you go. <laughs> After figuring out how to turn on the spider, we did a quick drill just to get a feel for the ride, the turn radius, braking, and reversing all in the parking lot. And soon after, we headed out for our test ride. Okay, how do I reverse again on this? Reverse, two steps, uh, you push the R down, and then you downshift. Okay, got it. You wanna go ahead and try it real quick? Yeah. There you go. And cool. Get it out of reverse, you just push the ride back in, yep. Got it. This is the first time experience for me, so this video is really just about like the experience so far, like the ergonomics of this, man, it is just incredibly, incredibly comfortable. And the fact that you don't have to worry about tipping over or lean, you know, it just makes all the difference in the world. I feel super stable, very planted, obviously, because of these two huge wheels uh, in front of me. It's got a lot of the accoutrements that you might want in a long distance touring machine. Like the instructor showed us all of the different compartments and, you know, it has reverse. And so, so many things to like about this machine. Obviously, it's for somebody who might want something that's a little bit more comfort uh, focused, but still very sporty and fun. I would imagine if you have a disability, like a physical impairment, this might be a more suitable option than a motorcycle, obviously. All right, clunked into first gear, let's go. Oh man. This is really smooth. I have to remember that we're not riding in staggered formation just because of how wide uh, these, these vehicles are. Right from the jump, it was quite an adjustment getting used to the steering and handling on the Spider. It does have power steering, so while turning the handlebars was insanely effortless, I did have to get used to the swaying motion on a Can-Am. The power delivery on the throttle was really nice and linear with no glitchiness, but I did have to remind myself to shift using the paddle buttons. I'm kind of like swaying back and forth because I'm not used to the handling on these things. Wow, but what an insanely smooth ride. So already right now, this is just a a rewiring of my brain because I'm so used to clutch and brake on my my front hands and all I have to do for braking is this right foot right here and I'm trying to get myself adjusted to just the, the swaying with every little shift of your handlebars this uh, Can-Am just reacts to it so I'm not quite used to that I'm also a little bit worried about this weather here because as you can see we have some rain that's coming through so that's but that's another benefit of these can-ams right like um the instructor was telling me how they handle great in the weather it's obviously three wheels so outside of just you know getting wet a little bit i think we'll be okay this is a real test ladies and gentlemen riding a can-am for the first time in this downpour all right so i'm trying to lean here a little bit wow within the first five minutes of our ride it started pouring and would continue to do so for parts of our ride However, I had peace of mind knowing that because I'm on three wheels instead of two, the risk of slipping and tipping over is minimized on the Can-Am. So I gotta give the Spider credit. I felt really stable throughout most of the ride. Uh, there were parts of the ride where I floored it and the rear wheel would fishtail, but it was still incredibly stable. However, the turning on the Spider was a different experience than I was used to. It creates a lot of force and twists your body. And there's a bit of a push and pull of movement on the handlebars. It oddly reminded me of being on a jet ski and how you would have to turn and wait for the jet ski to respond. On a motorcycle, the turns are pretty instant 
and with the Can-Am, it felt more like a prolonged experience. Because of the downpour, Heather pulled us over to a lot to check on us and to switch Can-Ams for a few riders based on the riding gear that we were wearing. I'll admit the rain wasn't ideal, but because I had so much confidence in the Can-Am, I was actually very much enjoying the ride outside of getting a little bit wet. Typically, if I'm on a motorcycle, I'm a little bit more worried about slippage, and so this was a really nice change of pace. Even during some of the turns, I wasn't quite as worried about slipping or anything like that because of the three wheels that felt really planted and secure. Even though it's raining right now, I'm having an incredible time. Just because of how stable this bike is, I'm not that concerned. But yeah, I love that you can kind of just like relax on this bike, you can just chill. Maybe that's why people get into so many accidents with these things, because you're lulled into a sense of safety. Either that or people are stupid, or both. The Spider F3 comes with 115 horsepower provided by the Rotax 1330cc engine, semi autic transmission. So it definitely has plenty of power to make any maneuvers that you need on the road. You have to think about your body all in moderation because any, any jerky movement, it's gonna really just throw you off. So I'm trying to make sure that all of my um, turns and movements are measured and not sudden or jerky by any means. All right, so let's see here. Oh my God. Oh my God. How do I? How? How? How is that supposed to work? Okay, so here's some twisties. All right, let me try to catch up with these guys. Surprisingly fun, not bad. All right, spider. If I'm being honest here, taking curves or corners on a Can-Am is something that I found not all that enjoyable. Taking corners or twisty roads on a motorcycle though is arguably one of the most fun things about riding a motorcycle. The two experiences just aren't comparable and I guess it's not really all that fair to compare. However, the Spider really did make up for it in terms of suspension and absorbing a lot of the imperfections on the road. You know, the suspension is trying to catch all the little imperfections on the road and you know when you make slight adjustments on the handlebars it kind of sways a little bit so it really does feel like i'm on water to some degree right like when you're on the water you're rocking back and forth this kind of has the same feel the weather finally let up for just a little bit during our ride and we were able to take some really nice back windy twisty back roads while i didn't really care for taking corners or twisties on the can-am i have to say overall i did really enjoy my experience the engine was smooth and powerful and the suspension and ergonomics made for a really comfortable ride. I think the value proposition on the Can-Am is that it's just very approachable and what I mean by that is anyone can ride one. There's really not much of a learning curve as you might face on a motorcycle. You know, outside of the controls, riding the Can-Am is a relatively simple process. And therein lies the beauty of the Can-Am, right? Its accessibility in terms of how easy it is to ride and enjoy being outside. And that's partly what drew me to motorcycling in the first place, to be able to enjoy the roads and scenery out in the open. Can-Amps provide all of that and makes it super simple, safe, with a lot of touring features in mind for at least the spiders. I will say the, the more time that I spend on the seat right now, uh, I'm kind of getting it a little bit, like how simple and easy it is to ride this machine and not, you know, having the machine do a lot of the the movements for you so you can kind of enjoy the environment you know you can just enjoy being outside and the suspension is just next level um, you know I'm not feeling anything whatsoever and in combination with this seat this plush seat it just makes it for an incredibly smooth ride like I don't feel like I am doing uh, a dangerous activity right now I feel like I'm just kind of riding a car but with the windows down a little bit but just still outside i don't know it's it's a very strange experience where you know there's a lot of things about this can that make me feel comfortable and at ease and even if i forget to shift or you know what have you 
like oh, this this machine does a lot of the the work for me like the downshifting uh from the placement of the handlebars and how you can you know shift things or, or adjust things for more of your comfort uh i saw on the on the riker that you can even adjust the foot peg placements so i can tell you know with can ams like the comfort side of things is a priority so having the right ergonomics really shines through here the one part that i'm still kind of getting used to is this these curves i'm not used to that movement where i just feel like i'm gonna get thrown off on the bike take this with a grain of salt because this is a completely new experience for me you know somebody might say to me you just have to trust the spider but you know i don't want to overdo it on this test ride i'll, I'll just leave it at that you know the curves I'm still finding a little bit of difficulty negotiating. I miss being able to just kind of lean in and really uh, experience the curves. But for this, so on the can amps for me right now, what I'm experiencing is that on the curves, they're not quite as enjoyable because I think my mind is doing a lot of uh, thinking and analyzing and that my body is doing some work. So it's, it's taking some time to get used to. But what I am enjoying is this uh, scenery, the weather, even though it just rained, it's nice and cool. Um, I'm just kind of enjoying the ride. So was the Can-Am Spider an enjoyable experience? Yes, absolutely. There's such a low learning curve on the Can-Am and I think that was this purpose. Once you get it started, you twist the throttle and point the handlebars to where you wanna go. You don't have to worry about the clutch, finding neutral or any of that. It's just extremely accessible, maybe outside the price point. But for me, I think that's what I like about motorcycling. You're in tune with the motorcycle and can control every aspect of it. And when you're learning how to ride a motorcycle, you get a rush of dopamine and, and a sense of accomplishment because learning to ride a motorcycle can be really difficult. It's almost a rite of passage. And the thrill of leaning into the curves is just unmatched on a motorcycle. I'd love to own one of these someday though, because going on a long adventure on a Can-Am, it does seem really convenient and luxurious. Well, that's it for me today. Thanks for tuning into this video, and until next time, peace. Yeah, this is super comfortable, man. Yeah. This is, it's just like riding on a couch, man. It's like, yeah.